Equal Pay Day is the date in 2014 that a woman must work to earn the same salary for the same work as a man earned in 2013. According to the latest U.S. Census data, a full-time working woman earns on average 77 cents to every dollar a man earns for the same work. Here with more on the gender wage gap, our Lawyers Club of San Diego President Joanna Giovanni and Kelly Jenkins Pulse with the U.S. Department of Labor's Regional Bureau. Now, Kelly, how does this gender gender wage gap of 77 cents to the dollar actually impact women and families? Over a lifetime, the earnings differences really add up. Our chief economist has estimated that it's nearly a quarter of a million dollars for the average working woman. And when you look at the differences for college-educated women and professional women, it can be well over a million dollars. What does the gender gap here as far as the wage gap look like um, in San Diego? In San Diego County, women earn about 80 cents, 80 cents to the dollar for men. And the reason it's a little bit higher in our county is that women in the county earn about 10 percent more than women nationally, while men in the county earn about 7 percent more than men nationally. So that makes our wage ratio a little narrower. Just a little narrow. But we have some specifics, actually. Let's take a look as far as uh, jobs, gender, and, and their jobs here in San Diego. So what are we seeing here specifically in San Diego? Well, you're going to see that occupations vary um, and that the wage gap varies by occupation and industry. In general, there's equity sort of at the bottom, some of the lowest paying jobs, and the wage disparities are the greatest at the tops. For instance, in, for the legal profession, um, it's about 58% of what uh, women earn compared to what men earn in those legal professions. And management as well, um, it looks like it's a little is, bit higher. Management is very high too, probably about women earning about a quarter percent less. Okay, and Joanna, um, how does this executive order that the president signed today um, help address the issue? Well, there are two different executive orders, and there it targets two different pieces of the wage gap. And and the first part is uh, permitting employer or employees to share salary information. And the executive order is targeted at private contractors who uh, who are employed by the government or who contract with the government, and it prohibits them from retaliating against employees who share salary information. The other executive order actually. Um, encourages employers to share more uh, um, uh, wage data by race and gender. Okay, and also the state Democrats I know are pushing for a bill aimed at also closing this wage gap, which Republicans uh, oppose, or state Democrats, I should say, Republicans oppose it, and Senate Democrats. And so um, if there's already laws in place, why is it that we still see uh, discrimination as far as gender in wages in the workplace? Well, Peggy, there's, there are a couple of explanations. There's direct discrimination where you, where you have a woman who is comparably educated uh, to a male counterpart and she's simply paid less and there, there isn't an, another explanation other than direct discrimination. There's also indirect discrimination. So you, you have implicit biases, whether it's in how an employee is um, it negotiates or, or how an employee is uh, they're given their performance evaluation. So um, there are a lot of different explanations for it. But one important factor is that women coming out of college earn 7% less than men, and it's not a mommy penalty at that point, it's just that they earn less. Does it have anything to do with uh, negotiation? And I wanted to, to talk with you about this first, Kelly. I know there's new data that says that women tend to negotiate for their salary differently than men. Do you think part of the reason for the salary gap is that? And if so, what advice would you give to women? Well, there is data that shows that women are less likely to negotiate their wages than men. And part of that reason is because women are intuitively responding to the fact that they know they're going to be perceived negatively. And they don't want to start their jobs, you know, on a negative footing. So, you know, I think what women need to do is to do a lot of market-based research. If they can take a Start Smart class while they're in college, do that. If they don't have access to market and salary data, you know, start networking. Find out what the market is paying and how you compare. And then be able to have that conversation with your employer. Um, you know, a general conversation. You don't want to go in, you know, demanding a raise, but you want to bring it up just like you would, you know, I'm interested in getting ahead in this company. And, and what would you say about that as far as you're coming in, let's say, as a new hire and you need to negotiate a salary? Women typically negotiate less than men. What would your advice be? Well, I agree with Kelly that doing research is really important, so information is power, right? It's also important when in a job to keep track of all of your successes. Document the, the contributions that you've made to your employer. It's something we don't do when we're busy. 
but it's really important when it comes to self-evaluation self time. So that's a great time to bring it up when negotiating for a raise or for salary is to talk about why, why you add value to the company and why it's a win-win. Alrighty, we'll have more on this on our website, kpbs.org. Joanna Schiavani and Kelly Jenkins-Pulse, uh, thanks so much. Thank you, Peggy.